Hey everybody, Dr. Dave Marquis here, and I had some things that I wanted to share with you about testing. Testing specifically to the virus that we've all been living with now for quite a while. I've had a number of questions come to me in regards to tests and the validity of them, the accuracy, when should I test, when shouldn't I test. And it's a, it's a useful question, and it's something that I think people should have a, a, at least a rudimentary understanding of. So let, let's start with the, the original uh, testing that has been utilized for much of the conversation and most of the media headlines, and that's the PCR testing, and get a better understanding of that. So PCR testing is a process that allows a small bit of something to be amplified into something that's measurable. That's the simplest way that I could put it. And what that means is that you're actually taking some genetic material and you're trying to allow it to grow sufficient that it can be measured. Each cycle that you take this material and run it through this process is basically one lifetime of that material. And so they set what are called thresholds after which they say, okay, this is the line in the sand when you're going to test positive. And one of the early criticisms of that type of testing for viruses is that you could literally test positive for anything on the planet, which is why they were able to take fruit or computers or you, you fill in the blank and test it and show positive for COVID. And you know, okay, well, that piece of fruit or that computer isn't infected with COVID. Well, maybe, maybe it was on there. The, the point is, is that we all exchange DNA all the time. It, it's, in our, it's in the air. It, sometimes I, I joke about different patients who have been married for a long period of time or an individual who has a certain breed of pet for a long period of time. And you kind of find that people start to act and look like each other the more they're around each other, even people with their pets. And when you look at that on a, a cellular level, you think, well, you know what? They've been around each other enough to exchange DNA for years. They are like each other. We, we, we become one another. So there's utility in that that you can see if there's material that bears that genetic signature of that virus but you have to understand that the more times that you have to force that replication the more manipulated that data becomes so a positive test in other words would be more positive so to speak on the lower end of the cycle threshold. And they had to arbitrarily draw lines in the sand. I, I know of some instances where an individual would test negative getting onto an airplane, and then two hours later land in another place and have to be tested there, and they tested positive. Well, the cycle threshold over on this end was like 20 thresholds, and the cycle threshold on this end was like 40 thresholds. So they had twice the amount of recycling to take whatever they could find in that person and make that virus material. So in both places, that person was asymptomatic. But over here, they're told that they're infected, and over here, they're told that they're not. So there's a lot of false negatives and false positives <laughs> with this type of testing, depending on which end you're testing on, which is why the actual developer of that technology point blank said, we shouldn't be using it for these purposes. And I think that's a message that people really need to hear and recognize. So I'm not a big fan of PCR testing because it can be manipulated in any which way you want the data to show. Testing that I'm a little bit more fond of would be antibody testing where you can actually look into someone's blood and see what their immune system has taken a picture of. And so interestingly with our immune system there's a whole family of antibodies. There's not just one to test for and say I'm positive or negative. You can actually learn a lot about 
how a person's immune system is interacting with the world and what it's taking pictures of just by testing different antibodies. For example, the kid that eats the peanut and blows up with anaphylaxia, that's an IgE antibody, it's an immediate response. Those individuals that tend to have, um, and I'm giving you an, an outside example, separate from viruses right now, this is more things that you might eat, okay? But recognize that it's the same immune cells. So I just wanna give it a face so that you have a, a general understanding. You've got immunoglobulin A, so IgA and IgM antibodies. These are largely mucosally mediated. You can actually find them in your mucus. If you blow your nose or if you spit, it's in your saliva. They live through your whole alimentary tract. They're kind of a first line of defense, if you will, out there having a meet and greet with what you're breathing and swallowing and ingesting. And these are the ones that I, I like to call the, uh, um, I, jokingly, I call them the Taco Bell antibodies. So you, you eat the food and you're in the restroom in you know, 20 to 60 minutes. So because your immune system disagrees with that and it pushes it through. And then there's IgG antibodies. These have a longer term memory. And I look at these as the ones that can develop a response over the course of about 96 hours. And then if your exposure has diminished, they'll taper off after about a week. So they're a longer lasting memory. And in fact, when you're looking to see if someone has long term memory of an infection, you're looking at IgG antibodies. And if you want to see if they have an infection right now, you're gonna look at the IgMs. So that's one of the ways that you can differentiate the value of those two different antibodies. So, you know, I, I've had a lot of patients for different vaccines actually come in, whether they, they are going to school and they wanna see what their polio titer is, or if they wanna see their MMR titer. Titer just means the volume of antibodies that your body holds that are aware of that particular uh, pathogen, that, that infectious disease. And you can test for that. So you can do an IgG panel and an IgM panel at the same time for these various things that we've been um, exposed to either directly through infection, where we would have a natural immunity, or synthetically, where you actually get a vaccine and your, your body is supposed to create a permanent memory of that. Well, one of the um, uh, branches off of this relative to the virus that we're all working with right now has to do with uh, neutralizing antibodies or amplifying antibodies. And these are two different cats. The neutralizing antibodies are desirable and these would be the ones that are, help your body calm down from an immune response. And if you have the it, it, neutralizing antibodies against this particular virus, then you can be assured that your state of immunity is uh, going to give you a better chance at not having an adverse or overcoming response when you're exposed to another variant. So they're really useful to have and it's good information to know. So that would be a useful test. But some people actually have more of the stimulating antibodies. And these are the ones where we're seeing people, and I'm seeing it in my practice, and this is one of the things that makes me want to share this with people. These are the things that make people have an adverse response, a really inflammatory response, where their immune system can actually start to attack self. So we see things with the nervous system happen. We see things vascularly happen. Uh, we see things neurologically happen. Not broadly, but in enough people that I'm like, hmm, something's not quite right here. And we need to figure out how to help this group of people. How, how do we help these people? And some of them have been vaccinated. Some of them haven't been. So it's happening in both camps. But one of the interesting things is that now as we gain momentum here, both as a country and as a world, with broader groups of people becoming vaccinated, you have to ask the question, well, if I'm still seeing this, and I'm seeing it in this group of people that have received a vaccine that's supposed to help them, but we know that it's potentially amplifying an immune response, how do we help them? How do we turn that dial down? So 
the, the jury's out on that one right now. And er, every day I'm doing research trying to find ways that we can help people's immune systems respond more favorably. And so this is one of the reasons why I think that it's useful to understand testing. And if you're asking that question, hmm, you know what, last year I really had a bad cold. I wonder if I had this virus. Well, you might want to do a neutralizing antibody test. And you can do an array of those things. So you, you can look at your IgA, IgG, IgM. You can look at nucleocapsid, the neutralizing antibodies, and get a composite of awareness of what each of those mean relative to your immunity. Because studies from um, Israel, and we're seeing it now um, in other countries starting to support the same data, show that natural immunity to this particular infection is like between six and 13 times more effective than what people are experiencing with the vaccination, which appears to have a waning period within about six to 12 months, depending on the vaccine that you're using. And it doesn't carry with it some of the other things of immune amplification in as broad of a population, or at least that's what we're early seeing. I don't have any data to support that statement, but just in my own circle of patients that I've personally had the opportunity to witness, that's, that's what I'm seeing. And then in my communication with some of my friends who are ER docs, this is what I'm seeing. So I, I hope that was helpful information so that people can get a better understanding of testing and the types of tests that you can do and why you might want to do that. And I hope that we as a population get to a point where we can be respectful of one another, regardless of what uh, choice you've personally made for your own health, and recognize that we have natural immunity available to us, and that should be something that is respected because we've depended on it since human beings first walked this planet. It didn't change because of this new virus. The immune system is the same. The same things that helped us previously help us now. And the biggest thing we have working against us is fear and misinformation. Remember that. So if you start to feel that, go back to the basics, please. Gather some testing on yourself if that is information that you need about you. And then make some appropriate choices relative to what your body is telling you. I hope that's helpful. Have a great day.